Hi, this is Boone Slot Car Garage. Let's do this. Hi, I'm Boone. This is Boone Slot Car Garage. And tonight, well, tonight we're going to go ahead and get back to scenery and get away from making little stuff. So we need to go ahead and finish off this area on the upper part of the layout that goes over to the other side. So let's do this All right so the first thing we need to do is go ahead and let's figure out exactly what we're going to do so if we look down on this side of the layout you can see that we still have an unfinished area through here and it wraps all the way around the across the back to where it meets up with the stream on the other side so what the plan is is that we're going to go ahead and lay down some of our wonderful pink polystyrene and go ahead and get that base down and put it all the way through and then what we're going to do is uh we're going to make this into a service road that comes down to the one side all the way down through and we're going to have a camping area over here on the on the other side so we're not going to be able to finish it all in one video we're going to start a new series of videos and uh this should be pretty cool so Let's go ahead and let's get started First on this. First thing we need to do is go ahead and get our poly polystyrene down. And what I've done is just go ahead and slabbed off a chunk of it. That's going to go ahead and go all the way down this area. Now to trim this into uh, to shape, all I'm going to do is just take my Sharpie and I'm just going to scribe a line on the back side of this. And then I'll scribe a line all the way down that way and then that'll have it form to the area I need to cut. So I'll go ahead and scribe my line, cut that, and we come back, we'll get everything glued down. Okay, so now I have my polystyrene all cut and shaped to fit right in. So now what we need to do is go ahead and glue it down. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and use some of this Gorilla wood glue. And I like using the wood glue because it bonds real nice and strong. It's a little bit thicker and it seems to actually dry faster than regular PVA. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and get this down in here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and do a pretty good bead. And we've got some creases in here, so I'm gonna work around that. Now, being that we are using a glue to go ahead and put this in, and I wanna keep on working, there's a little trick that I'm going to show you guys. So what we're going to do is just go ahead and get this on in. And put a bead across our, our existing board so that it stays on there. You know, a little bit of a brush just to kind of put it on. And I need to come out just a little bit just so I can do my overlap. So now that we got that, let's go ahead and take our polystyrene and we'll go ahead and get it put in here. So now that we got that there. Now you could go ahead and put some weights on this and walk away from it for a while and let it dry. Or if you're getting impatient, what we can do is go ahead and we're gonna set some screws in this. So what this is gonna do is two different things. A, it's gonna go ahead and set this into place and hold it so it dries nice and firm to our, our board underneath it. And the other thing is, is this is going to allow us to keep on moving forward. So we don't have to wait for this to completely dry. So what I'm gonna do is we have the, the board down here, the structure, and by applying force into this and making sure it's all where it needs to be, I'm just going to go ahead and take this and drill down through. And there we go. And I didn't go all the way through. I just went down a little bit so that this polystyrene will bunch up underneath it. But 
it's in there good now. And then we can go ahead and allow that glue to do its trick. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put a few of these in just to hold it into place and then finish off this other board and secure it in as well. But I'm just using a regular like sheet metal screw, self-tapping. Um, you could use a drywall screw or, or anything else, or if you just have some, some spare scrap screws hanging around the garage. So I'm gonna go ahead and set those in, and then what we can do is immediately move on to our okay. next step. So now we have this all screwed down, glued down, and if I grab this, it's not going nowhere. It's still wet, but it's not going anywhere. So kind of a cool trick. But now that we have this, now we need to do is go ahead and blend this into our existing scenery. So we don't want to exactly leave it just the way it is, especially down in this corner where we have a huge height difference. So what we need to do at this point is go ahead and start trimming it down. So what I'm going to do is take a razor knife and then just go ahead and cut this down and blend it out. So we have this area to address and we have up here on the side. So say you're taking existing scenery and you're trying to blend it in and you come across something like this where you know it worked good for your your old stuff but now yeah it just doesn't work so what we want to do and one of the things that i plan on is that i want to utilize more of this corner so in order to do that i need to get rid of this so first off we got our tree you know what I like making trees, so down with that tree. So here we go. Tree's gone. Get rid of the tree. So yeah, bad tree. But now we need to get back to getting rid of this berm. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and take this and we're just gonna slice it on down. And we're just gonna draw it through and just rip it apart. So get this down and I'm cut it a little bit high because I'm not quite sure if I want it completely flat. I'm just kind of utilize some of that for our other scenery we're going to put in there. So let's take our razor knife and go on through and it makes a mess so we're going to have some cleanup we're going to have to do but go on through get rid of that now this edge right here so you see that we have a definite edge what can we do sandpaper so if we take our sandpaper and see we have an edge so get rid of this edge and we take this and we can kind of soften it go right down in here and just work this down like so and that's pretty much what it comes down to. We're just going to go ahead and smooth this out and take care of these little odds and ends. Now, if we have a little bit of a seam up in here, what we can do is these chunks that we used that are all over the place, we can take some of this and use this as filler inside there. Now, you could glue this into place or... What I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this and I'm just going to jam it down in here, okay? And the reason why I'm doing that is because I'm going to go ahead and take some of that joint compound, that drywall joint compound, which is coming up. But what will happen is that that'll actually bridge over the top of this. And when this fully dries up against here, it will have something to just go ahead and bond to. So take these little chunks stick them down inside there as filler. So what I'm gonna keep on doing is just kind of shaping this around and getting this area taken care of. When we come back, we'll start addressing our regular polystyrene that we put down. Okay, so now time for a little bit of an update. I've gone around and I'm sanding this back with some 36 grit paper and just kind of bringing it down and blending my edge in. And as I'm going, I'm making some of this fine dust and I'm just kind of using that as filler, kind of putting it in between. So as I came down to this side and we're getting closer to that stream, I have this area, this, this back side. 
And instead of just blending this off, what I'm doing is doing a backslash onto it and leaving it kind of rough. And the idea is, is that I just kind of want to give a little bit different texture over here, not all flat. And I would think this would be a good area for just kind of doing an open face kind of rock wall. So on this side over here, you can see where I'm just kind of chopping this down and I'm just leaving a rough edge, okay? So we're kind of roughing it up so that it's going to have some rocks and we're going to have some dirt coming in over here. So while we're doing that, just kind of hitting it lightly. Get this down in here. Now we get up into this area. I'm going to want to kind of trim, trim this back just so it's a little bit uneven up on top. Now on this side where we went ahead and cut this down, I'm going to kind of do the same thing. Just kind of chop into it, get rid of that smoothness, and just kind of leave that rough edge. So just chopping right back into the stuff we put down a few videos ago. And then we'll blend this all through. So there, and you can see how that is. We're just gonna go ahead and make some divots here and there. And just kind of give it a little bit more character with that, that area. We'll kind of use the tip of the, the razor and kind of drag it. Actually, I might even use that up on top here. Just so we have some, maybe some open area, some rock right in here and it's kind of cool I mean if you look at that it really gives a cool texture to it it's all broken away so now we have that and again we have all this wonderful little bits and we're going to hold on to that and the idea is on this section right here we're going to make a bridge that comes across here and then it's going to be a dirt and gravel road all the way down this side so being that we have that kind of in the back of my head, um, we'll just keep on working this and keeping that in mind. And we'll get it like so. So, we come back, we have this all cleaned up, and let's start laying out what we're going to do with this okay. new section. So now that we have all the area kind of cleaned up and we've blended all our... Uh, our existing scenery into our new stuff what I need to do now is kind of plot exactly what I'm gonna do and being that this is gonna have a road that comes through here what I'd like to do is get that kind of roughed in right now as far as drawing you know some some lines in so it gives me a, a guide to go off of so what I'm using is just a little slot car here 132nd scale and I'm going to have a, a bridge that's going to go across the stream up here. And then we're going to have the service road that comes in, this driveway or, you know, it's going to be a, a gravel road. So what I want to do is make sure that my road is going to be proportionate to a vehicle. So it's, you know, it's going to look okay. So what I want to do is just go ahead and with a, just a ballpoint pen, I'm just gonna go ahead and put some lines in here, just kind of giving a little bit of a sketch as far as how I want this to go. Now, I actually, instead of being there, I might actually wanna come a little bit closer to this bank and just kind of come off like this. So what I'm gonna do is kind of use that as a reference point and just kind of bring this down and just, you know, it's just that little bit of guide so it takes a lot of the guessing point away. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in my lines and kind of get those set. And uh, then we'll go over to the other side over there and we'll figure out our camping area. Okay, so we've got our, our driveway coming in here, our little road that we're gonna build. And now what we need to do is figure out our camping area. So I'm gonna use the same little ballpoint pin and we're gonna sketch some stuff in. Now. I have a little trailer here that I'm just using for reference and this is something that I built and we will most likely be doing a video on these pretty soon because I need to build a couple more to put in this area but great thing for reference so 
uh, there's that. Plus, the other thing is I am using a ballpoint. I'm not using a permanent marker or anything along those lines, like a Sharpie. And the reason for that is a Sharpie will actually bleed through your paints and everything else you put down. Um, so a ballpoint pen, yes, it is ink, but it won't bleed as bad as, per se, a, a, a felt marker or a permanent marker. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and use this again, and we're just going to kind of sketch this out. Now, we have this open area through here, and I just want to make sure that I'm going to give myself enough room, you know, to, get, to put stuff in. Now, I'm just going to use this as a reference, maybe bring it back so far down here in the corner. Um, I'm probably just going to go ahead and cut that short down in here, so maybe we'll just make this a turn. And we want to want to make a little bit of a grassy knoll down here on the side. And we're just going to go ahead and just mark that down. Just so I have this reference to work off of. So now that we have kind of our sketching all done, uh, now we need to go ahead and start shaping this polystyrene. Okay. So now we need to go ahead and start sanding this out. Now I'm going to go ahead and answer one little question here. You guys probably seeing this uh, two by two that's sitting here in the corner. Uh, what that is is for my lift when I put it up to the ceiling. This is a guide post so that it rests on the, on the ceiling and it's a stop, you know, so I don't crush, <laughs> I don't crush my scenery when I winch my, my table up to the ceiling. So just so you guys know what this is. So now back to doing our scenery. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and use some 36 grit paper. And since we are going to be making this kind of like gravelish road through here, what we need to do is get rid of this smoothness. Okay. So I want to go ahead and kind of cut this down. I want it to kind of look like it's maybe some tire tread marks that are going through. And the best way to do that is to go ahead and use some sandpaper. So I'm just going to go ahead and start sanding this down and get the shape that I want. So a little bit of issue there. Let me go ahead and get it like that. And we're just going to go ahead and rip it across. And you can see that it's already starting to groove down. So if you ever looked at a, a dirt road or a gravel road, you'll see that they kind of dish out a little bit. So that's what we're wanting to create. And uh, so bring that. We have this seam right here. Let's go ahead and use some of these little bit of remnants and fill that in a little bit. And we can make that work to our advantage when we, uh, when we start to finish off this. But I'm just gonna go ahead and keep on going like so, and sit it down here, and then let's go ahead and let's grab our car. So if we bring that BMW back down, and we go off of our, our wheel width, we want to make it so we have a little bit of troughs on both sides. So keeping that in mind as far as reference point, let's go ahead and just kind of make sure we have a little bit of bit of wear and tear in this thing so we're already starting to get that shape into our road so let's keep on doing that and I'm just gonna go ahead and bring that down through now this area up in here I'm gonna actually gonna cut this down a little bit more so there's a little bit more of a, a difference in height between where our gravel road's going to be and where this grass is going to be. So I'm going to keep on cutting that down. When we come back, we'll see where we're at. So we went ahead and I've got that starting to shape through here. And now what we want to do is now that we have a little bit of that shape, let's start adding some character to it. So I have a little pothole that I made right here. And if we go ahead and we zoom in on that, so if we zoom in on our, our pothole, right in this area you can see it's just what we've done is just dug down a little bit so what i've done is taken my razor knife and just taken the edge of it 
and let's let's put one right in here so let's take the edge of this and let's just go ahead and just kind of pull down into it a little bit okay so we're gonna make this kind of a rough road to get into the the upper camping area of our, our track so and I'm just taking my sandpaper and just just lightly hitting it you know just scoring it we don't want to smooth it all out we still want a little bit of roughness in there because once we come in with our filler and uh, and put that on it actually is going to smooth that out but we want a little bit of texture in that so it shows you know this uh, this pothole and then what we can do is once we get that all in and we start saving all our little bits so again it's important to save your your remnants here because we can use that and make little rocks out of it little stones but uh, we can come back with that so let me just grab a few and you put it in here and it just kind of gives it you know we can make it look like there's there's some rocks and stuff at the bottom of our pothole. But enough with that. We get back to what we're doing. But if we, we have our little potholes, and if you use your sandpaper and you go ahead and just kind of roll it up a little bit so that it more mimics, per se, a tire, you know, instead of being flat, you know, kind of kind of roll it up a little bit and you just drag this in just lightly, it'll start to create that trough and plus the other thing is if you ever looked at a, a gravel road it'll have you know the areas where the tires went through and it'll make those grooves in the gravel or in the dirt so we don't want to make it all flat we want to go ahead and give a little bit of more character so just come through and kind of grab that and bring it down like such and that'll just help just add a little bit more to to your to your road so I'm just gonna keep this up and go all the way down and we come back we'll uh, we'll start addressing our camping area okay now that we have our road pretty much all roughed in now we need to go ahead and attack this this open area we're gonna use for a little bit of camping so I'm not going to attack it like I did with the road as far as making big grooves and everything I want this to be a little bit more smooth a little bit more laid out but I do want the belly of this to be down a little bit. So what I'm gonna do again is, is take this 36 grit paper and I'm just gonna take some material out of the center of this and leave it kind of burned up on the sides just a little bit. Because on this back side over here, we are gonna eventually put a fence and, and whatnot. But yeah, so we're just gonna go ahead and take this out. Now, those areas that we went ahead and put the, the screws in, some of these remnants what you can do is just use that as filler and just kind of put it in there and clean it off off over the side so when we come back with our joint compound it will bridge right over the top of it but what i'm going to do is just take this sandpaper and just bring this down sandpaper is getting worn out might need a new a new uh, piece but so we're just going to go ahead and just take this down i don't want it i don't want to leave it smooth because I want to add a little bit of texture to it, okay? You could leave it like this, but we want to give it a little bit more character. So I'm just going to take this and kind of bring it down through and drag and just take some material out of the, out of the middle of this so that when it comes down to the side, if I roll this up, actually, let's just get rid of that. Roll this up. And I'll drag it right through where the edge of my line is at. Bring that, and then we'll just start hogging some material out of the middle of this. Just kind of bring it down a little, show a little bit of depth. Bring it down like so. Just yard it out. So. A lot of times campgrounds you know they're a little bit wavy and you know through the years of people being in that area so down 
and like so. So I'm just gonna go ahead and keep on with that. And I'm just gonna go ahead and rough this up over here on the tip. And uh, I think we'll be ready to, to do a little bit of cleanup and uh, start our next step. All right, so at this time, I went ahead and have this kind of grooved out a little bit. You can see it here on the edges. Might be hard with on the, on the camera, but it does go down just a little bit. And why I did that is because I wanted to have grass here on the edge, but I don't want it to be flush with our uh, our open area down here. That's going to be gravel and dirt and a little bit a little bit of weeds. But I want to have that little bit of a berm here right on the edge. So went ahead and dug that out. And now what I've done is taken my vacuum and just kind of vacuumed up all the little bits. And that was after. I went ahead and swept it and let me grab it. I put kind of the bigger stuff into a plastic container. So I'm hanging on to, to these, some of these bits like that. And what we're going to do is we're going to utilize this stuff to create some more texture on, on this area and especially on our gravel and dirt road. So I'm going to go ahead and set that off to the side and we come back. We'll go ahead and start giving this thing a little bit of oomph before we uh, go ahead and put our joint compound over the top of it. Okay, we're ready to go ahead and give this area a little bit more texture. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and concentrate on this area that we went ahead and, and dug out. And again, this is going to be like grass up around here, so we don't need to worry about that. But this area down in here is going to be like gravel and dirt and whatnot. So before we go ahead and put our joint compound, I want to bring out a little bit more texture into it. So in order to do that, what we're going to do is I'm going to use some of this wood glue. Now you can use PVA or Maj Podge. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and use this because it's what I have next to me. And I'm going to go ahead and just kind of give this thing a good little coat. And you can see I'm just kind of laying it all down in here. And I'm going to put some down here on the edge. And now, set that over here. I'm going to take a brush and I'm just going to kind of spread this around. Okay. I'm not saturating the area. Um, I'm just... Just kind of putting it, putting it down through. And you can see that there are some areas that have the glue down and there's areas that don't have glue down. And the reason behind that is that I want this kind of sporadic. Um, I don't want it to be all just solid. I want to have a little bit of, of contrast to it. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this. Get that all kind of smoothed out here. Now that I have that, I'm going to go ahead and take some of these bits. And they make a mess, so kind of watch out. And we're just going to go ahead and sprinkle these on. And just kind of pat it down. And there's some bigger stuff like that. We don't want that. We'll throw that out. But just kind of sift it down through. And what this is going to do, it's going to give us kind of these sharp edges, like a little bit of gravel and some rocks. And we're going to build off of this later on. But we need to get this down first. So I'm going to get this down. Put a little bit down, a little bit more down on here, and then we'll take a break. You can see I got all sorts of junk in here, so... Ah, we'll get rid of that. There's a little bit of grass. Well, I'll we'll get rid of that grass. So there we go. And just kind of pat it down. And what this is going to do, it's going to go ahead and glue in place. And it's kind of the same idea like when I did the stream. If you've seen the stream video, you'll notice that there was an air at the time when I was working on the stream bed. And we wanted to get some rocks and some texture down there so we could see it. Um when we put everything else over the top. Now, if you see kind of bigger stuff like that, just go ahead and get that out of there. Anything that doesn't look like a natural type of form might be wise just to 
go ahead and get it out. So there we go. So I went ahead and I have that down and get that out of there. And I'm just gonna go ahead and work that way all through this, this kind of parking area that we have for the, uh, the camp, camping area. So I'm gonna finish that and then what we'll do is we'll come back and we'll start attacking our gravel and dirt road. Go ahead and let's start attacking our gravel road. I'm sitting here fidgeting with this. Uh, <laughs> so same type of concept that we did with the parking area over there, except for this being a gravel road, obviously we're gonna have a lot more down. Now, thinking that's a gravel road, our troughs where our tires are at are not gonna have as large boulders as it is per se in the center or off to the sides. So kind of keep that in mind when you start doing it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this, this glue down. And I'm gonna concentrate on my trough areas. And I'm gonna bring it right over to the side here and put it down into our, our potholes. There, now set this here and come in with our brush and we're going to brush this out and get this glue spread around so here we go get that through our pothole and draw it out on the sides Okay, now looks like I need a little bit more here on the side. Let me just go ahead and put a bead right across here. And then I want some down in here. Okay. So here is the sides. Now, you can see that I went ahead and pretty much just put this glue down where the actual road is at. Now what I'm going to do is take some larger, larger bits and we're going to start with those up here on the side. So we're just going to go ahead with these larger bits and get those kind of established. Now, if one or two fall down in the inside, yeah, that's okay. I've seen, you've seen everyone's seen a gravel road that has, you know, a couple of the bigger, bigger stones that have fallen down in, but for the majority, let's try to keep them on the outside. So go ahead and get that like so, and then let's stick some of these over here. And the nice thing about this also is where this comes down through, we can stick some of that right here along the edge and it can help hide our edge. So we're just gonna go ahead and stick some of those. That one doesn't look right, we'll get rid of that. And we'll just kind of put it sticky guys stick it right down in there so then once we get kind of our our edges done which i'm almost done with my edge now we can come back with some of the finer bits and you'll in your bucket you'll see where you'll have bigger stuff and smaller stuff and now with the smaller stuff we want to come down right into where the tire treads are going to be on our gravel road so take that sprinkle this stuff down in here we don't want to cover it a hundred percent we just want to go ahead and get that in there so it gives a little bit of more texture so when we come back with that uh, joint compound it doesn't fill everything in so let's go ahead and hit it like so now we have our our potholes so I have a couple of the bigger ones that I want to set down in here to give a little bit of texture to it so we can see that there's rocks down in the inside of it. And then I'll spread this down a little bit. But it's, you know, it's kind of a, a tedious thing to do, but you know, in the end, it's going to look pretty cool. And we got this seam that we need to fill in a little bit so I'll stick some of that stuff down in here so we get that and 
there we go we can see where we've got kind of bigger stuff on the edge a little bit of a trough we got a couple strays in the middle and we're just going to kind of keep that whole entire idea going on so a little bit bigger ones on the side finer stuff in the middle and go from there and then we have this pothole so we're going to go ahead and take some of these bigger ones stick them down in here get that guy down here and when you're happy with the look you can just sprinkle over the top and there we go so I'm just going to keep that and just kind of follow that all the way down my uh, my road. And uh, then what we need to do is let this dry and it's ready to finally put some joint compound so on. So now our glue is pretty much dry. It's a little tacky, but we're going to be okay. Um, being that our joint compound that we're going to put over the top is also water soluble and our glue is water soluble, it will actually not impair the glue as far as to cure out and dry so and that's because when we put the joint compound on it it'll breathe enough that it will allow everything to dry simultaneously with itself as long as it's not too wet and it's not it's it's tacky but it's not it's not wet so what i'm going to do now is take my joint compound and if you see my other videos you'll you'll recognize this stuff and we're just going to go ahead and cover this all up with our joint compound. So I'm just going to go ahead and take my brush and we're just going to work it in here and get everything just kind of a good coat of this. And I went ahead and ground up onto this area because this is where up on top, is where that bridge is going to come across and it's only going to be half a bridge but it'll be a bridge so we'll go ahead and get this down there and uh yeah so what you do is you just put it on and just kind of work it in so you can see that it just kind of seals it all up and what this will do is that then we can go ahead and do our painting process up over the top of this and uh it'll it'll work out good you know <laughs> so we get down in here a little bit careful but you just want to just kind of work it just a little bit we might need to use a smaller brush down there i think we are so i've got a smaller brush here and we're just going to go ahead and get it all put into our our gravel so you don't want to load it in you don't want to kind of a, a thinner a thinner coat and some of these are a little bit loose but that's okay because we can uh, the joint compound will actually work almost like a glue as well we'll stick those down in there so it goes like that we'll give it a little bit of a tack like this to give it a little bit more texture And there we go so i'll keep on doing this and when we come back i'm probably gonna have to let this dry overnight and uh when we come back we can go ahead and start our painting process so here we go we went ahead and we have our joint compound and it's all dry and next thing we need to do is go ahead and start our refinishing process but before we go there i just wanted to kind of show you guys something and that is when we sanded this down with this 36 grit and made those grooves, um, it looked like that the, the, the camera didn't quite pick that up right. And I wanted to show you before we start onto the painting of how this looks. Now, at this angle down here, you can see where it looks like there's, there's these tire tracks. And by grooving that down, just gives it that little extra effect. So, before we go any further, just kind of wanted to point that out, but now it's time to go ahead and start painting up this to make it look a little bit better than it does right now. So when we come back, we'll go ahead and start the wash process with putting down the brown and uh, 
yeah, let's get started on so that. So now we're going to do is go ahead and start our paint process. Now, I'm going to use uh, acrylic paints that are in the wash, so they're diluted down, so they go ahead and transfer the paint a lot easier. They'll flow out, and it creates a little bit of blotchiness as well. So what we're going to start with is the brown, and the brown, what I'm using is like a burnt umber and a little bit of white and a couple other colors in there just to kind of to make a, a good soil style uh, uh, color. But in this area, what I wanted to point out is that we have this area that's grooved out through here. And what we're gonna do after we get done with the painting in this, we're gonna make kind of a little bridge that goes right across this area right here. Uh, it's not gonna be a full bridge, it's only gonna be a little bit of half of a bridge, but I think that'll complete the scenery in this corner and as far as this access road onto the back side. So what we're going to do is go ahead and take this, this brown wash, and I'm going to start with the brown wash first, and just go ahead and, and get this down through here. And what I'm doing is, is more or less concentrating on the areas that I am going to have my grass at. So we'll just go ahead and get that all down. And then I'm also going to go ahead in some of these low areas that are in here, like in here and stuff, I'm gonna go ahead and put some of that, this brown as well so that we have not just all gravel on our road, we're, we're gonna have some areas also that are gonna have a little bit of mud and stuff in there. So we're just gonna go ahead and just kind of periodically, you know, put some of the brown in there as well. So what I'm gonna do is keep on with this and when we come back, We'll, uh, we'll see what she looks like. Okay, so just kind of checking in, you can see how that's looking and how we have the lines down through where the grooves of the tires are at. So that way when we go ahead and do our, uh, our gravel effect with the paint, we'll have that dirt as a base down there and it will actually, uh, um, it'll just kind of bring those tire marks out a lot better. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of do a little bit of a recap here. And I've got two different brushes, okay? So I've got a, a, a bigger brush and a smaller brush. And the bigger brush I'm using for the sides and stuff over in here, you know, big area, I can blaze. But when it comes to a little bit more of the intricate stuff, I'm using my smaller brush. Now, both of these are kind of a stiff bristle brush, or just a throwaway brush, but, uh. What I'm doing is that if you look down in here, you can see where these grooves are at, where it was sanded, and those were where our, our tire grooves are at. Well, if you ever look at a, a gravel road, you'll notice that down in the pit of the gravel where the, where the, uh, the tire tracks are at, it won't be a, a high condensed um, level of gravel uh, thickness, right? you'll be able to see through it and see a little bit of the dirt and stuff that's underneath it. And that's kind of the effect that I'm going after. Now, with the edges on this, how they're kind of blotchy, it's gonna be okay. Cause once we come back with our paint for our gravel, it'll actually just kind of blend those in and it'll, it'll look very natural that way. But, so we have these areas in here and you can see where this tire track comes in and this one's right here. Now this area has two of them. So we have one here and one here. Well, if we wanna kind of make those a little bit more pronounced, we can work those a little bit. So it looks like we have a little bit more of a groove in that area. And then when it comes down into this area right here, which is our, um, our pothole or a mud puddle, I'm just, going and taking the brown and going all around in the inside of it okay so what that's going to do is that we come in with our gray and we put that on on the top we'll have that that brown down inside and then what we'll do on top of that is come in with a little bit of resin and do a resin pour up on top and it'll actually look like uh you know a real little mud puddle it'll be really cool so Let's just go ahead and just keep on going like this. And I'm just going to kind of work that around. You can see where this comes down through into this corner. And in this corner, it looks like we have a few different marks. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of work those. Okay, so 
lot of times in a corner, especially if someone's pulling a trailer, you'll have, you'll notice that you have where your, your truck goes through or your, your car goes through, but the trailer will have its own set of tracks. So what we're doing is just kind of, just kind of making that effect a little bit. You know, it's not perfect, but you know, it'll just kind of give that little extra, extra bit. So I'm just gonna go ahead and keep on proceeding like this. And I just wanted to check in with you guys and kind of show you what was going on. And uh, when we come back after this all dries, cause we gotta let it dry, we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and start doing our gravel effect on the top. Cool. Now we're ready to go ahead and start the gravel. And now that we have the brown and stuff all the way down, and you can see where I kind of made it blotchy here and there. And I've already started the gravel over on this one side. But what I'm using is a, a, a wash, and it's, a, it's an acrylic wash. And this is just some black and some white, and I threw a little bit of brown in there, and even threw a little bit of blue in there as far as a, a light powder blue. And it gave me kind of a, a good, you know, kind of a gravelly look to it, right? So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take my wash and I'm going to work in the areas that are open, okay? What I mean by open is that I don't have any of the brown on it, okay? And I'm going to work in those areas and then I'm going to draw it towards my brown, okay? So I don't want to go right into the areas that I put my brown down, okay? So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and work this like so. And you'll see how this works. So we don't want to go right on top of our brown because we'll just be covering it right up. So what we want to do is draw down into it. So now we have some of these areas up here, the little rock cropping. And we got one right here. So I can just kind of hit that. And let's hit this. And now what we're going to do is go ahead and taking the side of the brush, not stenciling down, but laying it flat in a sense. And we're just going to go ahead and tap that and what that's going to do is those areas that we created that texture with it's going to go ahead and cover those up and leave the brown down below to create kind of that the, you know that dirt look to the underside and then just go ahead and kind of blend it into it okay just just kind of blend it in and if there's a little bit of white in there that's okay because after we get done with this whole entire process the last part of it is gonna be a, uh, a white dry brush over the top just to make everything pop on the back side. So go ahead and, and do it like so. And we'll just kinda, I'll do a little bit more of this. And then what we need to do is a, uh, a, a black wash, okay? And we're gonna put the black wash right over the top of what we just did. And what that's gonna do is gonna soak down in there and it's gonna create, you know, those valleys in that depth inside of our stuff. So now that I have it like so, go ahead and take this, kind of pat it down, and we'll just kind of do it just so. It's, it's kind of a tedious process. I admit that it is kind of a tedious process, but it really gives a cool look to it when you're all done. So this area up here that we, we just kind of plopped it in there, well, you can see how we're just kind of drawing it out. Okay, we got some gravel up here on the sides, some sporadic rocks. And we'll just go ahead and hit those like that. And it just kind of hits the top of it and just, you know, gives it those stray little spots of gravel on there. So let me go ahead and get that now. Now that we have this, I'm gonna go ahead and set this off to the side. So I'll set this off to the side. And now what I have is a black wash, okay? And this is over-reduced, so it's not real, real thick. It's not gonna cover real well. And what I'm using is a, a kind of a softer brush, okay? I'm not using a hard, hard uh, bristle brush. I'm using kind of a softer painter's brush, detail brush. And we're just going to come in, hit this, and just kind of work it down into some of those areas. I'm not going to hit everything with it. I'm just going to hit it here and there. And what that's going to do is kind of give it 
a little bit of blotchiness, a little bit more character to what we're doing. And you might see an area where maybe it's it's just a little bit heavy, you know, as far as the, the gray that you put down. We'll go ahead and take some of this, put on top of it. And for one thing, being that it's, it's over-reduced, it's gonna go down and it's gonna dissipate that paint some. And at the other side of it, it's gonna give it kind of this, you know, worn look. It's gonna give it some depth. And I'm even gonna kind of come right over the top of some of these areas that we created in the sporadic stuff, just to, just to give it a little something there. So there we go. There's this portion of it. And uh, just keep on going. <laughs> and uh, when I get done with this, we'll see how she looks. And we'll take it to that other step. Okay, so what we have going on now is everything's dry. And we've, we've got our, our brown down. We have our gray and our black wash all set in. And it's all, it's all dry. And now what I want to do is come back over the top of everything with a, an off-white. This is a oyster white uh, acrylic. And what we're going to do with a small brush is just go ahead and give some highlights. And what this is going to do is just kind of give some definition to all that texture that we put in. And I'm just going to lightly kiss the top of it. And I'm going to concentrate more on the areas that are that have all the gray onto it because obviously that's where that that rock and that gravel is going to be and then work my way down into the areas that have brown so i'm going to go ahead and clear my brush and get it so it's a, a dry brush and then work my way down so look, these valleys down here that will have a little bit of brown we just want to go ahead and kiss those areas that have that gray paint on them. And then that'll bring the definition of those out to make it look like the stones that are down here in the corner. And you might have some stuff, some loose, you can just go ahead and pick that off. And uh, yeah, but if you, if you work it that way, you know, it really starts to set stuff off. And then we have our little pothole here. So... I'm gonna work around the sides. So bring it up here on the sides like so. And then I'm gonna lightly come down through the inside of it. And that just gives that definition and gives you depth. So everything doesn't look washed out. It actually has some depth to it. So I'll just keep on doing this and uh, we'll come back and we'll see how she looks. Now we have our highlights all done on our, our gray and our rock. And you can see how it's just, it makes it pop, you know. It, it really starts to look pretty good. So the next step, what I want to do, and I will finish off this portion of it, is we need to go back over the top of this with a little bit of sand. So what the sand will do is just give a little bit of texture and whatnot. And just kind of give that little extra realism to it. Um... You know, one of the important things about doing this type of stuff is doing it in layers. You notice that we start with the brown and then we start with the gray and we start just working our way up. And what that does, it gives you depth as far as what your final product looks like. So at this point, what we're gonna do is I have some Mod Podge glue in a spray bottle and it's all diluted down. And what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and spray this area with Mod Podge, and we're gonna come back over the top of it with some with some sand, and then we're gonna go ahead and hit it with isopropyl alcohol up on top so that it penetrates through and holds the sand into place. So first off, I'm gonna go ahead and take my, my watered down PVA, Mod Podge, and we're just gonna go ahead and give this thing a little bit of a, Kiss here and you notice I'm coming up here on the sides and I'm getting down into the goalies and that's probably good about up there we'll set that here and now I'm gonna come in with a little bit of sand and I'm just gonna go ahead and just lightly sprinkle it on 
So let's see here, let me get this. And what I'm gonna do is work on these troughs where our, uh, our, our grooves for the tires are at. And I'm gonna get that so that we have some texture and whatnot down into those troughs. And I'm gonna hit those first, like so. You can see how those are kind of taking shape. Now I'm gonna come back over here on the side and hit the edge just lightly on both sides. So it kind of blends up in everything. And it just kind of gives a little bit extra texture for us. And now I'm gonna come up over the top. Come on, sand. And what this is gonna do is just kind of mellow everything out. It's gonna give us a little bit of more texture, a little bit more depth to our, to our model. And it really adds that, that extra something. I mean, it just, it's cool. You know, you start looking at this and you're like, wow, man, that, that's really taking shape. So we're just gonna hit it like so. Let me blend this out a little bit more takes a little bit of time and you could use this instead of doing it the way that I'm doing out of the bottle like this with the sand go ahead and hit that with like a, a shaker so like a, a, a salt shaker or maybe a, a pepper shaker you know that would probably work out good too but I just kind of like doing it this way I seem for myself I, I seem to be able to control this a little bit better than with a shaker so whatever your preference is but once we get that and you're happy with what your look is on it I think that's starting to look pretty good now we come back over the top with some isopropyl alcohol and we go ahead and spray this and it will seal it down for us and when the alcohol penetrates in, I have a little bit of a leakiness here going on, but ah, it'll work. But that'll seep down through and hold all that sand into place and lock it in. So I'm going to go ahead and keep this going on down. And uh, it's going to take a little bit for this to dry. But when we come back, we'll take a look at it and uh, see what we it's got. Fine. We have our sand in and it's all vacuumed and cleaned up. All the loose was already taken out. So that portion's all done. Now what we need to do is go ahead and do some static grass down on the, the one side over here and match that all up. But what I wanna go ahead and show you guys is I went ahead and made myself a little makeshift bridge. And I didn't film this. It's pretty much just a, a straightforward little bridge and made out of a balsa wood and just a simple little design. Now, I stained it with uh, the walnut stain that I use, the, the oil, and that just kind of gives it a darkened look. And then I went ahead and took some PVA glue and just did a stretch down on both sides over here and then took that sand that we put down onto our, our road and just went ahead and sprinkled it over the top. And then it just kind of gives it a, a, you know, just kind of a used look to it. And while it was just setting up, I went ahead and took some of that isopropyl alcohol and sprayed onto it. Now, when the, uh, the oil is a little bit damp and you put that onto it, what happens is it gives it kind of an aged look to it. So if we go, it's kind of hard to see, but it kind of gives it an aged look. And what I mean by that is it bleaches us out in certain areas. So I didn't film this, but I wanted to let you guys know so that when we, we finish this thing up and all of a sudden you say, whoa, wait a minute, there's a, there's a bridge over there. Well, there's the bridge. <laughs> so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and get some, uh, some static grass down alongside this all the way down. And uh, yeah. So let's go ahead and let's go do some Now grass. it's time to start some static grass. So went ahead and put down the matte Mod Podge, put a nice generous coat down. And what I've loaded up my applicator with is kind of a dried grass. And this is kind of a yellowish dried grass. And the reason why I'm using that is I got to blend it into some existing grass that's already there. So 
this will kind of help as far as to get that uh, just kind of that blending effect because it has a little bit of a yellowish tinge to it and I do not have any more of that type of grass any uh, available. So I'm just gonna go ahead and, and do some of this and just kind of sporadically put it around. And what this will do is help me as far as blending this out. So just got that one in there. Now I'm gonna come back with a little bit of a mixture of grass. And let me load this one up real quick. And this is all four millimeter static grass. And so we'll put that in here. Come on grass. Okay, so now I have the four millimeter uh, blend grass, which is kind of a, uh, a, what they call summer blend, and it's a little bit longer. And what this will do is go in there and fill up that gap for us. So with the yellow that's down, it'll kind of lighten the, the appearance of it. And this stuff right here, will just go ahead and finish it off. And then that way we can blend this into the existing grass. So I'm just gonna keep on applying this and I'm gonna work my way all the way around the, uh, the gravel road there. And when we come back, we'll go ahead and put some resin into our mud cool. puddles. So now we have our static grass all down. And while that is drying, I went ahead and vacuumed up everything and got all the loose ends all taken care of. Main thing I was concentrating on was to get it off our road because now we need to go in and start filling up some of these potholes with some water. So what I'm going to use is this epoxy glaze coat. And this is the same stuff I used on my river and also on my, my lake for the waterfall. Now I'm using this because I still have, you know, some left and you could use like Woodland Scenics, the water effects or, or that type of material. But since I do have some of this left, this is what I'm going to go ahead and use on this. So what it is, it's a, it's a, two part and you mix it one to one and uh yeah it catalyzes all out and you get about four hours working time with it so i'm gonna go ahead get this mixed up and when we come back we'll go ahead and start filling in our potholes so i have it all mixed up in here and that's that epoxy that i was talking about and what we got is we have a few of these potholes we need to fill in so what i'm going to do is try to do this nicely but we're going to get this over the top and just let it kind of drool on in here and uh, just kind of help it along and what this is going to do is just you know it's that cool little extra thing that we can do to make stuff kind of kind of unique so i'm just going to let that do its thing There's one, and this will self-level, so it'll work its way on out. The big thing is, is you don't want to fill it up too far, and especially on this one, because it is on a slant, it'll start to run down. So I think that's as far as I can go with that one. Now let's just go ahead and do this one right here. And as far as tinting this stuff, these are so shallow that as long as we have our, uh, our paint work done on the lower part of these mud puddles you know it'll it'll work okay now if you wanted to go ahead and dirty up this water you could I mean you could you could tint it with a little bit of brown or uh, maybe a, a yellow you know something to kind of give it a little bit more Whoop, we got a loose pebble there but uh yeah so there we go. I'm just gonna go ahead and work my way down here. And uh, so I think I got a few more to do. So what we'll do is I'll do that and we'll come back and we'll see how these things okay. look. So we got it all poured in there and it just kind of gives it that extra little bit. I think it's pretty cool. I mean, we got a few of them down through here. So kind of breaks up the monotony and it gives a little extra something for your eye to catch on to. So. 
at this point, I think we're pretty much done with this until we, uh, we do our next video in this area. So yeah, so let's go ahead and we'll close this up. All right, so there we go. We got ourselves our dirt gravel road and indoor camping area. And we even got mud puddles on it. So yeah, let's go down there and let's take one last look at it and then we'll finish this thing up. <laughs> If you like this video, like it, share it with others, and subscribe to my channel. And uh, yeah, we got that little thing up on top as far as the Facebook, and I also put my Instagram on there too, so there's two different ways that we can communicate with each other. And uh, yeah, I'm working on some other stuff that we're gonna go ahead and add to the channel. I'm working on merchandise, and I'm working on a store, so we can go ahead and I'm gonna start building some stuff now that this is going to be the last area on my layout to do. And uh, I'm going to keep on doing this, doing a bunch of other little projects. But since I'm not going to be able to put them on my layout, maybe we can put them on your layout. So, yeah, kind of cool stuff. So keep on watching and I'll keep you guys posted. But next time on Boone's Slot Car Garage, well, tell you what, we're going to be back over here finishing this thing up. All right. Catch you guys later. Thank <laughs> you.
Hi, this is Boone, Slot Car Garage. Let's do this.